Okay, welcome back to another episode of Kitchen Tie. We're going to change things up a little bit. We're going to get away from that vintage fly tying for a few flies here. Had a couple really good days on a local stream where I caught a bunch of fish on different flies that I haven't featured in this series yet. So it's time to tie some up. Today is going to be a March Brown wet fly. Cut a couple nice fish recently. Got some uh, good video. So we're going to show you, uh, first we're going to show you the fish, where I caught it, how I caught it, and then we're going to show you how to tie the fly. Okay, stay tuned and uh, check out the fish and then I'll be right back and do a little time for you. Easy. Right around now. Get out of your mouth. Don't pour it out, but okay. Look at that. It's a rainbow. Okay, let's get the time to fly. We have a device here is a number 12 2x long 2x heavy wire streamer nymphed hook from Risen Fly. It's a, a local fly shop near me. What I'm going to start with is a few wraps of thread. The thread I'm using is uh, Brand name is called Royal Sissy. I also got it at Risen Fly a while back. And it's a real thin, flat thread, 75 denier. It's like a silk thread, old school silk, but it's synthetic. Cut off your tag end. Wrap it back to the top of the bend of the hook. And now you're going to add a tail. What I'm going to use for the tail is a hackle feather that I have from, uh, oh, it was a generic cape that I got at a, another fly shop up the road called Nishanik Fly Shop. They had it in a bargain bin. I figured I can use it for streamers and such, and it actually works pretty good for these tails. So we're going to measure about one shank long. Good, lay it on top. Give it a couple wraps. Wrap backwards. Right to the top of the bend of the hook. And what you want to do is bring your thread back. Take it down under the tail. Pull it tight and give it a couple wraps. What that's going to do is going to split your tail out nice just like that. Now we need to wrap in a piece of tinsel. What I got here is an old spool. This is actually my father's old spool of tinsel. I bought uh, several silver ones that actually have thicker gold one but this is pretty thin gold. And wrap that in. All the way back to the tail. And now we're going to add a little bit of dubbing. Dubbing we're going to use. First take this wax. Wax your thread up a little bit here. You want the dubbing to stick right on it. This is premium dubbing wax. 
super sticky. Just for this purpose, dubbing we're going to use is 100% wool. The wool is from a yarn called Fisherman's Wool that you can get uh, pretty much anywhere. Any uh, sewing shop, craft store. It's 100% wool made for knitting sweaters. But you uh, take it, cut it in, in smaller pieces, throw it in a coffee grinder for a few minutes, and uh, chop it up, and it comes out real nice. It's real buggy. Looks just like this, and this is about the amount of you want to put on each time. You don't want to overdub it. The more dubbing you use, the more problems you're going to have. You're going to wonder why you can't get a good tight noodle. Why can everybody else do it and you can't? Well, the reason is you got too much dubbing on there. I, mean, I had to learn the hard way. Everybody has to. So just a little bit on there. Dampen your fingers. I got a little Dixie cup in front of me. And spin it on. Try to make a nice tight noodle. Work your way down the thread. Nice and tight. Pretty much just like that. And start by spinning it backwards right to the point where the tail meets the hook there and spin it up. You want it to be pretty even on the way up there. No big humps or bumps. If you do get a little thicker there, just spin it back on there. And take it all the way up to just shy of the hook point there. See, I got a little more too much on there, but that's going to cause a problem. When I ripped it away, it's going to come off the thread, so now you got to work it back on there. So that's why you try to be accurate on how much stuff you need. But... You can save it, just like that. See how it looks on your side. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Now you're going to take your tinsel. You're going to kind of wrap. Pretty big spirals. You don't need to be too tight on this. About four or five. This uh, replicates the segment of body, the Mayfly has, and if that happens, which is going to start over. Just don't clip the hook point. And then when you get to here, take your thread and give it about four wraps. I do a couple wraps in front there. Just make sure it ain't going to come out. Flip it away. Now you're going to add some hackle. Hackle I'm going to use is from a wet fly saddle that I have. It's brown. And actually, it is a nice dry fly saddle, but I bought it as a wet fly saddle. But it also makes good hackle for these type of projects. So what I did is I stripped one side of the barb rules off. And at the point here, I gave it a little crew cut on one side. And this is going to help me secure it to the hook. And what I'm going to do is you got a dull side and a shiny side. I'm going to tie it in with the shiny side toward me. A lot of times what you want to do when you're tying dry flies, you want the dull side towards you, but not on this fly. You want the shiny side towards you. You want the shiny side to end up facing out. Cut away your excess. And go ahead and start wrapping that in there. Oh. You 
you want the side you stripped the barbels to be touching your fly. That way, the reason I stripped those off is I don't want too much bulk. I'm going to give it just a few wraps. Now I'm going to tie it in. I always do four ties. One, two, three, and one last one for good measure. Four. Trim it away. Now you're going to take this hackle. You can see here, I told you it's actually nice. Dry fly hackle. Yeah, I bought it uh, as the video wet fly, but it is nice dry fly hackle. So, take your fingers, get them damp again, and pull your hackle back and give it a couple wraps just over top the very edge of the hackle here. And that will do is it'll lay it down for you. So, Go too far back, it's going to be too flat, but that's kind of what you want right there. You can brush it out a little bit if you want. What we're going to do is we're going to take a wing and lay it right on top. And before we do that, dampen your fingers again and part it right down the middle here. This will get this out of the way of the wing. Now I prepped a wing already, and what I did on this pheasant feather is I cut a section off of this side here, and a section off of this side, and try to even them up about the same thickness, and however thick you want that wing is however you know much you cut off, but I try to make it a little thicker, so I took about maybe a quarter inch or more, maybe uh, three eighths of an inch off right there. That's how thick it is. Let me show you here. So now I got two sections, and I put the doll sides facing toward each other. Line them up. Sometimes the toughest part is to line them up. Line them up to the tips. Get that one up a little higher. So the tips are facing each other, or tips are uh, aligned there. You got something that looks like that now. With your non dominant hand, place it right on top of the feather. You want the feather to be just longer than where your dubbing ends, right where the bend of the hook is. Straighten that out for you there. Put your hand right on top. Pinch it good and tight. Pull your thread down a little bit. Pull it straight up. Pinch it in between your fingers. Down the opposite side, farthest from you. Back up nearest to you. Still got that thread pinched between your fingers. And pull it straight out. And pull it tight. I like to try to adjust to make sure everything's on top at this point. Still get everything pinched nice and good in there. I'm going to have one fiber trapped. I can see that now, so we'll take care of that now. Without cutting your thread away, give it a couple wraps. And we're going to see how this comes out here. Moment of truth. How's that look? Pretty good. Alright. Take your excess without cutting away anything else that you don't need to cut away. Trim it away. Do a few uh, thread wraps. Make Build up your head a little bit. Okay, looks pretty good. Get your whip finish tool out. It 
it's here somewhere. Here it is. Give it a whip finish. Okay, nice and tight. Trim your thread away. Let me just check everything here before I finish it up. Gonna put a little UV finish on it. Right on the head there. Just get a little dab. Take your block in, run around the thread. These old school flies like this are really effective. If you're uh, throwing some nymphs and nothing's hitting, dig into your box of tricks, pull one of these out, give it a go. Looks like something that they uh, want to eat. And there you go. Give it a zap. Hear that real good there. Got a nice uh, March Brown wet fly. Good to fish. In uh, even a slower water. And if you find a little slack water, you can strip it just like a streamer, and it works well. So if you like this video, please uh, give me a subscribe, hit the like button, give me a comment what you like about it, and stay tuned. I got a few more to go. I had a couple good days fishing recently, and I got uh, I don't know maybe six, seven flies out of that uh, couple days of fishing that I haven't tied on video yet. So lucky you, you get to see some more. All right, hope you enjoy it. And uh, stay safe out there. I'll see you next time.